Welcome to the Level Up Artists Podcast. We're your hosts, Adriana May and Jackie Sanders. We are two art professionals sharing for the advice and business lessons we have learned along our creative journeys. We talk to artists, leaders, and art professionals to demystify the creative process and discover new ways to succeed as a career-minded artist. If you find value in these conversations, please go ahead and subscribe. This will help other creatives like you find our podcast and you'll be notified when we drop a new episode every Tuesday. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about the idea of, are you reflected in your artwork? And I know, especially for me, when I was first trying to establish my creative style, this was very top of mind, thinking about who am I? What do I want my artwork to be about? Does this reflect me? And I think Ultimately, for me at least, the answer to this question is typically yes. If you're being true to yourself, then inevitably you are going to be reflected in the work that you make. Because even though in the beginning it may seem like you're trying a bunch of different styles, eventually you'll find the art style, the visual style, um, the mediums that work for you. And this discovery part of your creative process is part of the journey. But it is important to evolve past that to start creating your own work, not just mimicking other people's styles, but finding your own voice and finding what feels right to you. Yeah. And as it relates to the process itself, um, ultimately finding your your style is going to result in creating art that feels natural. It feels right for you. It feels almost intuitive. But the process isn't always going to be smooth and straightforward. Just know it will be ultimately rewarding. It's always changing as you change as a person through the years. So does your art. So this is normal. But kind of like Jackie was mentioning, it's like we all start learning from others. And at first, our work may look like that of others. But if you are putting in the serious practice hours, so to speak, and no, you don't have to do it full time to put the serious practice hours for the record. Um, but as long as you're kind of putting yourself into it and trying to discover what it truly is about and going through the process, there is no shortcut to finding your style. You have to put in the work. So um, some things to think about as you're like, I, I don't even know where to go with this is you want to think about the concepts and imagery that are in your work. So some ideas might be... Um, what are you exploring it, you know, through your work? What, what do you want to communicate through your art? Um, you know, is it like an experience you went through? Is it a specific social message? Um, is it just a feeling or even like trying to describe a place that you've been in um, and trying to share that with others and connect with others through the art? Also, you hear us say this one all the time. What do you want to be known for? Do you want to be known for a very specific niche style in your art or message through your art? Um, is it something about the techniques you're using or using the mediums in a special way? And that's kind of like what makes you stand out. Like, what are those quirky things about you, right? If we're all 99% the same DNA wise, right? Mm -hmm. And like experiences and everything we go through. What's that? 0.1%, actually, it's probably less than that, but what's that tiny little bit that makes you different from the person sitting next to you across the street or on the other side of the world that you can show through your art, you know, and that's basically you, your combination of experiences and your taste and your aesthetics and whatnot. When you put all that stuff together, it's uniquely you, right? So we're all similar, but also different. Um, so how can you show that through your art is something to really think about. Exactly. And ultimately, I mean, making artwork is a language. It's expressing ideas and concepts and stories in a visual way. And so as you're reflecting on all these questions, reflecting on what you want to share, what you want to be known for, or how the work you already make is connected with you, Really thinking about that when you are writing your artist statement, when you're sharing your artwork on social media, because we have found that's been a super effective way to connect with your audience, to engage collectors, is by sharing those stories that may seem obvious to you, the background behind how a piece came to be, whether the process of making it, whether your mindset while you were making it. Um, and really sharing how does that come through with the finished piece that a potential collector is looking at? What processes do you want to use 
to communicate these ideas? Or what's the origin story of you and your creative practice? My favorite thing um, to say when people are visiting our studio is the common question most people have is, oh, well, how long did that take you? And (laughs) whether the painting takes you physically to put paint on a panel or on a canvas, whether it takes you 40 minutes or 20 hours, my answer is always the same, is that it's taken 29 years (laughs) <laughs> which is how old I am right now. It's taken 29 years of my lived experiences, my lived ideas, questions that I've come up with, practicing from a creative material standpoint, different styles um, and different evolutions. It's taken me 29 years to make this piece come to life, which always kind of catches people off guard at first, but it also I think is a testament to what people don't think about when it comes to your creative practice. We're always practicing. We're always evolving. We're always changing. And therefore our artwork does too. I love that you shared that. It actually reminds me of a story, um, a famous painter from the past, James Whistler. Um, Not a hundred percent related, but it definitely reminds me of that where he was taken to court by one of his collectors and in court, they were asking him a question One of them, which had to do with what is this painting about? So he explains, you know, what he was portraying in the painting. And then they're asking him, how long did it take you to complete this painting to knock it off? Literally, they called it that hilarious. And the artist responds, it took me about it takes me about a day to make the painting and about like the second day to finish it. And apparently the person asking the question in court is like, wait. So you're asking how much, like this amount of money for something that only took you two days? You know, I can imagine back then they were like, that's way too much money. And he goes, no, I'm asking for this money because in order to complete this painting, it takes the knowledge accumulated in a lifetime. And what you just said just reminds me of it. Exactly. That's a mic drop moment. (laughs) Definitely a mic drop moment. And honestly, it applies to whenever we get asked that question in the studio. Gently, lovingly, but we get to say, <laughs> it doesn't matter how many hours it's took. Like you said, it took you 29 hours. It took me, I'm not going to say how old I am because that's where we're at right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> just slightly older than you. Wink. But <laughs> essentially it brings me to that idea of like, I feel like for you to be reflected in your art, it's not just about those different Like, it's also like, obviously your life experiences and everything, Um, but it's not just technique, right? You also have to have a degree of knowing yourself and having lived and having had to put in the time and the effort and the focus to say, okay, I've learned all these things from different people. We're all an accumulation of others' knowledge. I mean, that's how we move through, right? In humankind, in general terms. Um, but at what point do you say, okay, I have this toolbox of techniques and influences and artwork that I've seen and I've been impacted by, and that's the art side of it. Then you also have your own experiences, the, like the voice you want to communicate. And then essentially you're just like making this giant stew <laughs> of different things, but trying to make it your own and there is no shortcut to this and it is a lifelong journey, but like the biggest thing with all this that we're trying to impart upon you, uh, so to speak is no matter what, you know, isn't that stew <laughs> that you're putting in there, get out of it. You, right. Like make that art reflect you make that art that no matter how many years have passed from now, you go, that is me. Maybe it's not me anymore. Um, based on where I am in my life now, but it's still me. It's authentic. It's nobody else's work. It's not a copy of anybody else's work. It's my work. Like, this is it. This is what makes me different. And uh, this is my legacy to the world. So with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. And we really hope you enjoyed this conversation. As always, our blog will be linked in the show notes where you can find episode notes and links to our other podcast episodes. If you want to stay connected with us between episodes, share what you have learned. Um, you can reach us through social media. I'm at a art across all platforms. And I'm at J Sanders studio on all platforms. Or if you want to stay connected with the podcast, we are at level up artists on Instagram. 
Thank you so much for listening. We'll talk to you next week.